bombing run. All the way from Oddly Funny Studios in Detroit, Michigan, it's everybody's favorite comedian game show, Bombing Run. Yes, this is where three comedians do their five-minute sets, and my mysterious comedian judge decides whose set is Joker Ace of the Night. Joker Ace gets to do one of my other shows that I produce, and uh, it's, it's always a lot of fun. The comedians can also get feedback from the judge if they want. So the judge is looking for your set of punch and your appearance on Zoom so or on a live studio audience camera. So if you're doing your jokes and you're pay- looking over here, you're not going to win. Just a, just, a, just, a, just a note about that. You're not going to win. If you're looking at your jokes uh, on the door over there, and you <laughs> decide to look at us, it's not going <laughs> to win you anything. Okay, so please keep your eyes forward. Just pretend that we're at an open mic and everybody's looking at you at the bar going like this. <laughs> all right, so I'm used to that look all the time. All right, so uh, the promo went with Jeffrey, Laura, and Kathy. That is the order of the night, and that's how we're going to be. So up first is our first combatant of the night. Please welcome this je- stage, Jeff Weinstein, everybody. Woo, 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 woo. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's uh, Valentine's Day, and I'm very happy to say that I've been with the same woman now living with her for the past several years, the past uh, um, seven years. Ooh. And uh, after I met her, a few weeks after I met her, I wasn't sure if she would be wife material until she got into the car with me and started criticizing my driving. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have an open door relationship. The bedroom door always stays open as long as I don't piss her off too much. <laughs> 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 Um, we have an asexual relationship. I am asexual pervert and (laughs) she doesn't want to hear about it. (laughs) Um, I always had, I'm so glad I'm, I still don't have to, I don't have to date anymore. I found my one true love that I'm going to live with, uh, long-term that I always did so poorly in dating, especially first dates. The, the girl would always, we'd be sitting in the coffee shop, and the girl would ask me, well, are you always this quiet on a first date? And I'd say, yes, but you should see me on the second date. I'm a real animal. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, especially, like, like for first dates, dating, it reminds me a lot of job interviews. I didn't do well in those at all, being on the spectrum, being on the autism spectrum. So uh, the interviewer would often ask me, well, where do you see yourself in five years? And I would say, uh, in jail. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd ask me, um, she would ask me, are you on any medication? I said, yes. I swiped the birth control pills off your desk this morning. Oh, <laughs> oh. So then she, then she used to be shocked and she says, well, why the heck did you do that? I says, well, because I wanted to grow big breasts like yours so I could feel myself off all day. <laughs> oh, <geez>. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I have to be honest. Um, a lot of people find that I'm a very weird guy because I've Asperger's. So everybody's sort of Asperger's, right? It's like, so, you know, it's not something you'd go in and order off the menu Burger King because in all my life, I've never seen somebody go into Asperger's and say, I would like a double cheese Asperger, please, with a side order of obsessive compulsive disorder. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I had so much problems in school with uh, having ADD and Asperger's. Um, The one time in grade three, the teacher kicked me out of the class for yawning. And I was placed on the principal's 10 most wanted list as a serial yawner. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, and I never, I never, I have a checkered um, dating history. I, I, I dated uh, a woman for uh, three, three years, over three years, uh, and we lived with each other for uh, two years. She was paranoid schizophrenic. So, um, and uh, so she, she was always accusing me of cheating on her. So she uh, wanted to take a contract out on me, but her English wasn't good enough to read the fine print. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that, that was the first time um, I dated a woman who uh, was better at martial arts than me. So it was kind of, <laughs> kind of a brutal relationship, you know? And then as I got older, and uh, one one uh, night uh, smoking marijuana, I smoked a joint and um, fell asleep. Woke up, forgot that I left my music on, and called the police on myself. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> the police where I live here in Montreal know me quite well hmm. because of my because of stupid things that I do like that and my. Um, uh, domestic uh, uh, dispute, my my uh, con conjugal violence uh, uh, history. Um, I got I got violently ill um, listening to all her stories. Um, anyway, so that's my time. Uh, thank you very much. Give it up for Jeffrey. Yeah. Everybody. Oh my God! Wow. And Jeffrey, where can we find you on social media? Uh, well, I have a Facebook page called Spectrum Comedy Productions, cool. and also my YouTube channel by the same name, Spectrum Comedy Productions. Sweet. Go check out Jeffrey. He's doing all kinds of comedy. He's up in Montreal. Yeah, the word, not quite where the truckers were blocking everything off, so he's lucky. So uh, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, <laughs> Jeff. And uh, sure. he reminds me, you know, uh, next week, this show is not going to be on uh, because next Monday is my seventh wedding anniversary. Wow. Woo. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you. Did you know the seventh wedding anniversary is copper? Yeah, that's copper. So I got my wife a kettle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she said she's getting me a sandwich with brass knuckles. Not not even the same material, so I don't know. I, I guess I screwed up. I guess I screwed up. All right, I'm going to leave away with that joke. The second comedian of the night is going to be coming up the stage. Please give a big warm welcome to Laura Nelson, everybody. Woo, 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 woo. Hello. Thank you. I am Laura Nelson. I'm excited to be here. Um, I've also, it's Valentine's Day. I also just celebrated my 10 year wedding anniversary. Um, and the secret to a lasting marriage is not getting divorced. <laughs> um, I just found out I am a quarter Jewish. Uh, and let me tell you, that is a quarter I plan on saving. <laughs> I I belong to a small group of intellectuals who believe snow globes are flat. We <laughs> are hashtag flat snow globers. <laughs> I have a daughter. Um, she's like six years old, three feet, 10, 50 pounds, roughly the size of Danny DeVito. <laughs> she, she's six and she has no idea who Larry David is. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes after dinner, she'll go, those were some good chicken nuggets. Pretty, pretty, pretty good nuggets. My husband tried to convince me on a tattoo for our daughter, um, Posey, something sweet, like some flowers, but 
I don't know. I still think six is too young for a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> the overarching moral of Aesop's fables is animals are dicks. <laughs> Um, I'm never going to be a superhero because both my parents are still alive. Uh, oh. but, but I love real life heroes. It's dark. Don't worry about it. I love real life heroes. Um, my brother-in-law is a Marine. My grandfather fought in World War II. My uncle Rick fought valiantly in the Mattress Price Wars of 1998. <laughs> we lost a lot of good sleep that year. Oh. <laughs> Memory foam. Hashtag never forget. Oh. No one knows why the Mattress Prize Wars started, but maybe it's like a Game of Thrones thing. Like the twins look nothing like the king. <laughs> Uh, at Outback Steakhouse, they say no rules, just right. But I can tell you decidedly, they have rules. <laughs> so, like, shoplifting is a crime, I guess. But it's more like diet crime. You know, like when I think of shoplifting, I think of teenage girls sneaking some Dr. Pepper lip smackers from CVS or Winona Ryder. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor, very rich Winona Ryder. I <laughs> uh, guess what I'm saying is crime is a spectrum and gender is a spectrum. So let's do it. Let's gender crime. <laughs> if I had to gender crime, I would say shoplifting is feminine. She, her. Uh, larceny is masculine. He, him. And check forgery is non-binary. They, them. Just wearing clothes from the 80s, just really big and be energy from check forgery uh, <laughs> and men still make 30 cents more on the dollar than women in money laundering. Mm, it's a shame <laughs> to say. Um, I'm going to end with a joke, which is what I think y'all are looking for, which is every time God closes a door, it's because he's not trying to heat up the entire neighborhood. Thank you so much. I'm Laura Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's give it up for Laura Nelson, everybody. And Laura, where can we find you on social media? I am everywhere on social media at Laura Tells Jokes. Laura Tells Jokes. So you're on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, and all those things. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter mostly. Oh, sweet. Go uh, check her out there. Very funny set. And uh, I love it. It was so funny. I, I never thought of gendering uh, crime, but now, now it's all <laughs> I'm going to think about. Uh, I did. I did make a faux pas. Uh, I forgot to introduce our judge for the night. Uh, they're flying through the air. And uh, please give it, a, give it up for my judge for the night. Judge Cupid, everybody. Let's give it up for Judge Cupid. Woo! Oh, my gosh. It just look, look at Cupid just bouncing up and down. Uh, Hit me with a joke or an arrow. I'm not sure which one it was, but I thought it was funny because it kind of hurt. You know, laughter can be kind of hurtful. It can be kind of hurtful, especially when they're making jokes about me and my looks. Look, I know what I look like. I look like Mr. Clean if he let himself go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry. See? I don't, I don't get laid for doing all the housework. Oh... <laughs> oh, Sergeant at Arms, I don't know if you want to win because you that means you'll get hit with an arrow. No, I can't win this game show. I cannot. I am the host, General A.A. Ron. This is my show. I am the General Bomber. So I've already bombed for all of you guys so you guys can shine. So our third combatant of the night is going to be coming up the stage. Please welcome 
Kathy O'Brien, everybody. Woo woo woo. Hey. woo. Uh, like when I think I might have been 18 years old, and um, I bought. I really loved. My, I had the sweetest mother in the world, and I bought her this beautiful potted plant. Uh, and I went out and um, did LSD and stayed up all night. <laughs> and then I came home at 5 a.m. And I was like, oh, I, I still want to give mom this gift. So I woke her up at 5 a.m. I'm like, <laughs> oh, like, mom, I, I've got to give you this, this gift. And um, she was so sweet. I'm sure she's like, uh, what in the world? <laughs> um, I'm sure she suspected weird things were happening, but uh, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, my husband and I, we've been together a long time and he's, he's just a really hard guy to shop for. And uh, I don't know, we're not like super into Valentine's Day, but every once in a while I'm like, oh, I should get him a gift. And uh so one time I got him a wooden Peruvian flute. <laughs> <What? And laughs> he's a bass player. He's like, oh, okay. it's really nice, <laughs> but I don't play flute. And uh, so that was awkward. And then like one year, <laughs> I, I, I got him a self-contained goldfish in a bowl. Uh, <laughs> I <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I was just like, <clears throat> I'll get him a self-contained goldfish in a bowl. And um, I'm like, you just have to feed this goldfish one pellet of food a month. Um, it's <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so like I'm. Um, we named the goldfish Goldie Hawn and like a month later <laughs> Goldie Hawn died. And, oh. um, <laughs> uh, and so every time I see a new story about Goldie Hawn, I'm like picturing a goldfish floating <laughs> on, the <top laughs> of, on the top of a goldfish bowl. Uh, <laughs> which uh, that's kind of dark, but um, Lord. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, today was kind of a bus for Valentine. My husband has COVID. And so I'm like, I guess we're not going to go out to eat. And <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just, uh, it, it's crazy. Uh He's like, I didn't get you a gift. And I'm like, I don't care. Um, I don't care. I don't want a gift. And then he had this highfalutin new base arrive today. <laughs> it's this bright green, really nice looking base. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm glad you got a gift. Uh <laughs> <laughs> It's it's all good. I'm I'm it's all good. He deserves a base. Uh even though he's probably <laughs> D bases. Um <laughs> he does. He's got so many bases. Um but anyway, uh yeah, you know, every day should be a love day. Um and then uh I just want to put it out there. Um, I work with a lot of healthcare. This is not funny at all. Um, I work with a lot of healthcare workers and things are really brutal for them right now. And taking them like homemade cookies or uh, even Chips Ahoy <laughs> cookies um, with a note that says, thank you for what you do makes a huge difference. And they're, it really makes a they super appreciate it. Um, so looking out for the first responders is uh, an easy thing to do. Um, all right, I'm done.
All right, let's give it up for Kathy O'Brien, everybody. Yeah. Woo All right, Kathy, where can we find you on social media? Hey, I, you know, I'm on TikTok, Kathy O'Brien Comedy. Ooh. It's Kathy O'Brien Comedy something or something. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. It's. <laughs> are you posting? Are you posting a lot on TikTok? I I've done I've done like I don't know six or seven videos. I just started TikTok. I was very TikTok resistant, and my friend was like, "You should totally get on TikTok." And it's you know, it's, a, it's, it's fun. A different, it's a different kind of app. All right, uh, Cupid, you've been flying up in the air. I've seen you've been aiming your arrows. Uh, no, this is not love connection. <laughs> no, Jeff is with somebody. Kathy's married. I'm married. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> You're supposed to pick the Joker Ace, Judge Cupid. I'm sorry. I'm talking through, through the computer to the judge right now. It's just so. Oh, so you understand the game. That's good. I thought maybe you were too high in alt altitude and maybe forgot how the game was played. All right, so. I know who Joker Ace of the Night is. And it's Laura Nelson, everybody. Woo -hoo -hoo! All right, you are the Joker Ace of the Night. And uh, get with me after the show. We'll get you on one of my other shows I put on, and they're always fun. They're all online, so they're a fun bunch of shows. Thank you for playing the night. You are Joker Ace of the Night. And that was it. And for everybody else, I want to give a big round of applause to Jeff Weinstein and Kathy O'Brien for playing. Oh, my gosh, you guys are so awesome. Thank you for playing. And this has just been for fun. If you want feedback, please contact me after the show, and I will get the feedback from the judge. You will not know who this judge is. Judge Cupid is a real comedian. Do not have them fool you for flying up in the air. They are a real comedian. Please let this. Yeah, yeah, they are a real comedian. They're not a fake flying little cherub up in the air trying to shoot you with arrows. Oh, <laughs> great show, everyone. You guys were so amazing. And uh, next week there will not be a show because I love my wife and she'll kill me if I have a show on our wedding anniversary. So <laughs> not me. I almost got killed for having a show on tonight. So <laughs> I said, honey, our seventh wedding anniversary is more important than Valentine's Day. And I got the cold stare of death. So I guess there's no sex for me for a week. All right. That's the end of this show. For me, Judge Cupid, and my co-producer, Sergeant Arms, this has been an oddly funny production. Thank you all. Thanks for hosting. You're welcome. This has been an oddly funny production.